Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Demon's Crest. In the last part, we defeated Arma for the last time, that third fight is actually the last time, and got ourselves the Legendary Gargoyle transformation, which we're now going to use in level 5 Atlantis, because we're not going back to the Ice Palace area yet, because that's technically stage 6. And the Legendary Gargoyle, as I briefly went over last part, is basically an upgraded firebrand. It looks cooler, and as you can see by the fact that our health is now green, we have double the health. So we essentially, instead of having, I think that's 12, we have 24 hits to us. And our uh, main attack does double damage. So as you can imagine, combining that with the armor talisman is really good. Uh, that's not gonna say that this game's not gonna be still hard. Uh, a lot of the main stages from here on are gonna be easy. Uh, but let me tell you, end game for this is annoying no matter what you do. Either way, despite being Atlantis, our first destination here is actually above the ground because the thing about Firebrand that I think I went over back in the uh, waterway aqueducts area next to the town, if Firebrand enters the water as any of his forms, he slowly takes damage. And not like uh, Alucard did in Symphony of the Night where his health just slowly drains. You get knockback still. So you don't want to do that. Our goal is instead to head up and around this area. Which, uh, I actually didn't take a shortcut that you could potentially have taken with the aerial gargoyle by going up through a certain ceiling, but I did that for a reason because then I would have just had to go back for this anyway. And that hole I mentioned is actually directly to my left, I'm about to jump over it. Uh, speedrunners, I believe, do use that hole, but I don't want to because I wanted that life extension. Atlantis Temple, though, this part, that's what this part of the stage is called, I think. Not a very hard stage, even without the legendary gar gargoyle, eh. In fact, that's what I can say for a lot of the parts of this game. Boss fights aside, a lot of the game isn't that bad, uh, in terms of difficulty. Oh, hi! Uh, next boss fight is the Crawler, and you want to run away from this thing, because I'm not sure if it's instant kill at this point, but it'll certainly do a lot of damage. And then I recommend getting out legendary gargoyle form. And now we have to wait for him. Come on, buddy. God, slow walkers, am I right? Oh, he's eating stuff. Gross. Either way, the crawler is mostly invulnerable to attacks, except for when he shows his eyeball like that. At which point, you obviously shoot the eyeball. I mean, you, you've all played video games. You know you have to do this stuff by now. Uh, without the legendary gargoyle, this guy's act this guy's actually pretty hard because first off, you can jump over him otherwise without the arrow gargoyle, and he just does a lot of damage. Uh, I think he does two damage per hit. So if you're being reckless, this can be kind of annoying, especially if you're not jumping over him with the proper time. Yeah, that would have done two damage to me. Best way about it, uh, the interesting thing about him, rather is that he can only face the direction you start the battle in. Uh, like, right now, obviously, he can only face the right. However, if I died to this guy and came back, I believe he'd already be here in the boss area, and he'd be instead facing to the left. So I'd be jumping over him to get behind him by doing what I'm currently doing. Which, odd design choice, but eh. Either way, with the Legendary Gargoyle, as you'll notice is a running theme, a lot of these boss fights are not that hard. With them, the damage can be kind of ridic uh, ridiculous at, at times, but on the whole, it's nothing too bad. But he does drop our next crest, the Crest of Water. With it, we can morph into the tidal gargoyle and swim beneath... Move along... The Oceans! So now we actually have a way to mitigate water, which we're merely going to head back over to the Aqueduct's waterway area to the right of the town and use it, because there's a few things for us here. Uh, the title gargoyle is probably the most situation gargoyle in the game, though, because there's not many water areas. Its attack is pretty pathetic. I think it only does one damage, maybe two. And its A ability is just to swim forward in a straight line. It's basically, it's, out of all the gargoyles, it's the one that's kind of the most tacked on in my eyes, because there's not real any other utility to it. I mean, the aerial gargoyle can do some other stuff in the forest stage, and as well, it can just be used to get around a lot of areas. The ground gargoyle, before you get the legendary gargoyle, is good for boss fights to do the double to damage that happens with the standing shot. And the legendary gargoyle is the legendary gargoyle. Also, time for the worst hidden thing in the game. Uh, I got a vial a few moments ago underwater, by the way. But if you head down here, 
really, really strangely hidden, is our next talisman, the Hand Talisman. The Hand Talisman increases your rate of fire, so instead of, like, with, say, with the original uh, fire you start with, it's not so much blah, blah. It's more so blah, blah, blah. I don't think I've ever said that sound effect before in my life, huh? Either way, now that we have the title Gargoyle, as you see, we're going for a bit of cleanup. Next up, we're actually heading back into the forest for the final time, because there is a blocked doorway here in the first screen I never went into. Why? There's stuff we need the aquatic, uh, the title Gargoyle for beyond it. It's plain and simple like that, honestly. Also, slow down. Oh, boy. I should mention, the Legendary Gargoyle can headbutt. In fact, uh, the headbutt's the most common ability in the game. And I only just now noticed that cool-ass skull in the background just to my right when I unpause. That's really cool looking. Either way, welcome to the Tidal Caverns, I believe this place is called. And it's quite tidal because there's water constantly raising and lowering here. Uh, theoretically, you could have come here earlier. But you would have also had to avoid the water by jumping on the platforms and such. Basically, just taking the upper route, like I'm doing right now. But it's better to have the title Gargoyle, because then you can get a certain item here without having a lot of pain happen to you. Also in here is our next Vellum. So, you know, that's cool. Not gonna... I don't get a single spell in this game. I forget if I mentioned that before, but I don't like using the spells that much. Although, that does remind me, there is actually one person in the town I don't talk to. And that is the guy in the first door, I believe. I forget his name, but he basically... You talk to him with the talisman equipped, and he tells you what that talisman does. By the way, this is why I waited to come here. Uh, there is a door under here underwater that you need the... Aquatic, uh, the title gargoyle to get into reliably. And there's also a lot of money in here if you want it, so... Good way to gain, uh, grind for money, too. I believe you could theoretically get the item that's behind this door just with Firebrand and the Magic Buster, because uh, your shot does also act as a Magic Buster underwater. But it's just best for me to do now. And in here is a ma uh, life extension, but now I'm immediately going to head back. Because if you head back... Uh, if you come out the other way, I believe it comes out to this pond uh, in the second screen of the forest. Instead, I'm going to head over here to the right and fight our next boss fight, Skula. Skula is made up of two parts as we saw there, the body and the head. And you want to focus on the body first, because the head is easy. Uh, ground Gargoyle, Standing Attack, or the Legendary Gargoyle is recommended, just so you can get more damage in more quickly. Uh, particularly with the Legendary Gargoyle, you could go after the head first, but I like killing the body first because then I could just put the head into a lock. Most of its damage is touch-based, I believe, and I think it has maybe added projectile attack. But this boss doesn't usually get a chance to do much, especially when I get it to this phase, as you can see. And for doing that, we get a life extension. Cool. And now that we have the title Gargoyle and a bit more stuff cleaned up, we're gonna head back to Atlantis, I believe, to head to the lower route. After getting one more item, I think. So, let's see what's beneath the water in this area. I really do wish that the title Gargoyle had a better A ability. Well, I guess I should just call it ability, because you can customize your controls in the options menu. Uh, like, I wouldn't mind if maybe if you also went faster while doing so and you could damage enemies. Because just swimming in a straight line is kind of anticlimactic for me. I get why it's there, because uh, the way that you swim otherwise is you're basically mashing the jump button. Uh, to just swim up in spurts like that, similarly to Mario. But, I would have liked some other stuff with it, you know? Also, if it's not clear, similarly to the ground gargoyle, the title gargoyle cannot fly, nor can it cling to walls. I do know there is a purpose to the, uh, title gargoyle ability, though. Either way, we just went back up towards where the crawler fell from the ceiling from, and if you actually jump up the hole it made, you can find a life extension. And now I need to cut back uh, to the entrance, because now we're going to go the lower route. I didn't need to do this, because there was actually a route I forgot about. In the room where the crawler falls from, basically the entirety of the uh, Atlantean Temple, there is a pond on the bottom of the screen that, if you fall down, as I'm about to show off, leads into here. 
I forgot about that until I just went through it. <laughs> Why? I blanked out, I'll be completely honest. <laughs> Some people would probably redo a recording session for that, but I didn't care. It was like, what, 20 seconds gameplay, roughly? Two seconds edited out? Nothing too bad. By the way, underwater is actually pretty dangerous because it, it, you can take a lot of damage down here. Be it from uh, uh, environmental sources like the spikes or just enemies. But there is at least another life extension. Three more to go. Uh, one thing, by the way, I'm going to bring up now because of uh, the way we end the part is that you're going to notice I end the part with like one life extension missing and one talisman. Don't worry about those. Uh, the Demon's Crest does a bit of an annoying thing in my eyes where the last few abilities, or not abilities, uh, items are in the final level. I don't like it when games do that and Demon's Crest does it. I, I mean, Gargoyle's Quest did it too as well, to be fair, with that uh, life extension I forgot to grab to max out my health, but I at least showed where that was on screen accidentally. This is where the Gargoyle's A ability kind of comes in handy right here, because we're going to be swimming through a lot of spikes like this. So if you get a precise position and just swim straight forward, you could. I just didn't mind tanking the damage. Though if I- I forget if I had a ginseng at this point. I think I was too low on money to buy a ginseng. Eh. Uh, the underwater level though, while you can take a lot of damage here, there's also not much in your way, because the enemies, more often than not, are either proximity based or don't do anything until you, you're too close to them to the point where you might as well be wondering why you got hit by them at all. I definitely have an elixir. I actually really like that graphical effect of uh, the bones reforming. It's basically just the reverse death animation, but it looks cool to me. Either way, we're about to come to this stage's boss, which is, uh, weird. Meet Holothurian. He's a giant snail. And he's also very easy, but I only have one HP, so you can probably get, guess how this is going to go. Holothurian's main attacks are to suck and blow water through and around him. And that impacts those little bomb things that he's spawning out of both his butt and his shell. So basically, it's closer to a sh uh, shoot 'em up where your goal is to instead dodge everything while doing damage instead of just purely doing damage. I think I get about halfway through his health bar here. And something you can do, in fact I did after I died, is just go Legendary Gargoyle and tank the water damage that happens every like second or two just to do more damage to Holothurian itself. Not a very hard boss, but if you're, say, say you come here with less life extensions, it could be potentially annoying, I think. I don't know, I've always had around, uh, I think the lowest amount of health I've come when I fought, I had when I fought this guy is 13. And I think I did fairly well during that fight. And we just killed a snail, which honestly, uh, reminds me of this weird shoot -em up I played on the PlayStation a few years, uh, about maybe half a decade back by now. Uh, there was this one... Ah, that's loud. Uh, there was this one boss that was a giant frog and... Well, if you've ever seen the John Tron Japanese shoot -em up video, you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, that game's weird. Either way, Holothurian only dropped a health extension, so he was technically an optional boss. Now we're heading back towards where the Ice Palace was because now we're here for the mountain half of this stage. Which has one of my favorite tracks in the game. Uh, we haven't heard my favorite song yet. We'll be hearing that next part, I believe. But this is a really good track. And here we see me taking the stupid way around things, uh, which you could very feasibly do uh, for this first screen, I believe, of the mountains. Is just do what I did to get into the Ice Palace, fly along the top, and then just dip down at the last second to go for, uh, for the uh, correct exit. Because, honestly, you don't miss too much. There's nothing of interest down there. Oh, well, that's an interesting thing. If I recall, the Legendary Gargoyle's breath is also a combination, slightly. In that, I believe certain effects that, like, the Buster would have on enemies, it does as well. I could just be... 
imagining that, though, because I don't recall these uh, armor-wearing demons taking two shots uh, to knock the armor off of. Either way, the last Vellum, I believe, is here in this stage, and we are right about where it is. It's in here. With that, we actually are only missing three items. Technically four. Uh, the last talisman, the last li uh, the last two life extensions, but we're going to get one of those momentarily anyway. And uh, the last crest stuff. But first, here's our next boss, Grewon. Grewon is easy, no matter what you do. Uh, the way he works is that he's constantly jumping around the screen and trying to breathe ice at you. But as you can see, after I hit him, he turned green. Whenever you turn... Uh, uh, he turns green whenever you hit him, and when he's green, he's entirely invulnerable. So basically, it's a low health boss that you're just supposed to be doing a lot of dodging with. And to be fair, he can be hard to dodge. He's taken down my health quite a bit. I believe his attacks... Yeah, because I, I think touching him, or maybe his ice breath... Ice breath did two damage in Legendary Gargoyle form. So that's four damage going your way otherwise. But overall, Grimwan's pattern is very self-explanatory. And for beating it, we got the piece of the fire crest called Demon Fire. This is the most powerful fire in the realm. It's Dark Fire from the first two Gargoyles quests. But it's also sufficiently more useless, because we have Legendary Gargoyle. Uh, you're supposed to use it to get Legendary Gargoyle, I believe, and such, but I just do this. Either way, we're now back at Trio the Pago Shop, because we need the life extension from here. <laughs> Plain and simple. Like I said, you could potentially to do this, go practice at the other two locations. One is a location tile, like a little house in the middle of the land, and the other is a forest tile on a small island. This is the one in the middle of the lake I showed off. Get 25 of these skulls broken in 30 seconds, I believe it is, and you get a health extension. This can take a lot of practice, because uh, as you can see, even me, who's played this game a few times, is having some trouble here. It's always annoying to time, and honestly, uh, I don't want to know how many speedrunners just screw this up at the end uh, when going for 100% and just fail. Thankfully, my second time around, I got it pretty well. Barely, though, as you see. And we're the first one to ever clear this level, so take this. It's a special present for a true gambler like yourself. You can actually tell just by entering what level of Trio the Pagos places you're in. Uh, because here in the third one, he's purple. I think in the first one, he's pink. And the second one, I forget. <laughs> but with that, I'm going to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part five, we're heading on to the final main stage and taking the fight right to Phalanx. See you guys then.